everybody and uh, welcome to another fix it video with me Chaz Large. Now uh, on the bench today we have a Sony tape deck. Um, this is a uh, Sony TC-K611S and uh, that's what it looks like which uh, is quite a nice looking machine. It's a three head machine. It's got Dolby S on it and uh, quickly switched it on uh, just to check it just now to see what was happening before we did the video. Powered it on, press the open and close. It's trying to do something but it's not doing what it should do. So I think uh, rough guess I would say it's probably going to be something like a belt fail or something like that. So anyway let's get inside it. Um, and I'm going to try my, uh, I bought this little wow stick uh, screwdriver uh, off of um, eBay. Was it eBay or was it uh, Amazon? I can't remember. Anyway, it's a wow well stick. It's 15 quid um, and it just uses two uh, AAA batteries. Um, seems to work quite well. Uh, I thought I needed a little quick little um, thing, but that's going to be probably not enough torque. Oh, yeah even if I get it in there it's not enough to talk so <laughs> probably a waste of money but anyway it'll it'll come in handy the good thing about it actually was that it came with where are we uh, a set of uh, screw heads screwdriver heads uh, which are you know quite rare some of them I've got a few in a little kit but uh, that's uh, a few others so uh, anyway if nothing else uh, it's given me some extra screw heads to use Right, let's get the screws undone. I'll probably fast forward through this bit. Managed to dig out my old uh, bench mat um, from the, uh, the undergrowth of the uh, stuff in the den here. So uh, uh, just to give myself a bit of a better work surface uh, and also when I'm going to work on um, static components. Right, this is uh, proving to be a little bit more awkward to come out. Normally, it just sort of these sort of things just sort of pop out, but it may be it's got caught. Um, maybe it just should come straight vertically off. There it is. It's vertical, just straight up. There we go. So let's have a little look inside and we've got inside here um, quite a uh, big circuit board and a mechanism at the front here uh, with three motors as it says and there is one dry belt which you can see just in there. And if we turn it on, because I left it. Now we power on. So it's not that one that's turning. It seems to be this one down here. And yes, we can see it spinning down there. But it doesn't seem to be anything connected to it. So. Whether it's the mechanism has gone out of alignment or something, we don't know. We need to get in there and have a look. So let's turn it around that way. And yes, touching the uh, the drive belt that's on there. So you get that in there and get that focused. That drive belt has turned to mush. Wonderful stuff. Yuck. Remains of one drive belt. Hmm. So that's the drive belt that used to go around the capstan. And you can see there's probably a bit of it still stuck on the capstan. So 
it's uh, going to be a major dismantling job uh, to get that out of there. I'm a dry belt, get me out of here! <coughs> oh dear. Whatever next, eh? Let's go back to that view. That view gives us a good overall view of what we're up to. So, uh, first thing we need is a bit of scruffy cloth. There it is, a bit of old kitchen paper. And get rid of this gunk that's stuck on my screwdriver. That's going to be interesting. I wonder if that's all going to clean off with some isopropyl. Hopefully. Anyway. So it looks like that mechanism is mounted onto this front panel. And the front panel has got various other bits mounted onto it. There's a s Let's go back to overview. Three for overview and focus. Yeah, so we can see on the front panel we've got uh, the main controller and there's another board there and this is all on here. So I think we should be lucky in that we can actually unplug everything. So let's get a screwdriver just to start that plug off of there. I do hate to see in videos where people just grab all of the cables and pull stuff. It's the plug you want to unplug. You wouldn't, un you wouldn't unplug a mains plug from the wall by grabbing it by the cable, would you? No. Grab hold of the plug. So luckily I've got a pair of pliers with little hooks on the end. And I can use that to unplug that. Ribbon cables on the other hand, you can't help but plug them because they've got no plug on them. That's got a interesting plug on it there. Just use one side to hook underneath it. Yeah. It comes out. Is that a plug? Hmm. Breaking my old golden rule there. I don't know. If, I don't think that's a plug. I think that's. doesn't appear to be a plug. So those don't appear... No, no, that is a plug. That one is. No, that one's not. Hmm. I think I'm going to have to unplug them from this end on the deck. Which is rather awkward. Some you can see are obviously plugs that will unplug and some are looks like they're pinched into a connector on there so we have to pull the the plug out of this end can't, it's right pushed in so I can't grab hold of the plug lever it just slightly. So I think that looks like the same size connector as that one. Is that the same number of pins? No, different number of pins so we shouldn't be able to mix those up. Yeah, different again. So that's those. That's held there by that wire. 
that plug we should be able to get hold of with fingers. Come. Grab the pull up. Okay, plugs are colour coded. Those two, they look the same number of pins. That's the two heads. Colour coded. Alright. Ribbon cable off of there, and ribbon cable off of there. So we all seem to be fully disconnected from the front. Let's just that cable. No, we don't need to do that actually because it's I'm not taking those cables away, am I? Okie dokie, so let's turn it over. screws on here have got arrows on so we know which ones to undo good old serviceable bit of kit be able to ah we need to take the door off can we manually push the door out we've got to crank it some way what I'm trying to do here is there's of course you're not seeing it because I haven't got a camera in the right place but before I can take the front panel off I've got to remove this door and the only way I can get that door off is to crank the mechanism out. Now there's a gear here driving the door lever and that's not turning by hand. So I'm just seeing if this mechanism here, which seems to be turning. Whether that will do the job for me. Yes, it is. that's done that and then probably what usually happens with these front doors is they're usually just clipped in there we go clipped in like that this little drop in clips so let's put that to one side and we should then be able to remove Ah, ah, we've got to take those two screws out there, so I wonder if it'd be better to... Yeah, let's just take those out there. Again, arrows on. I keep forgetting to put the camera back in the right place. <laughs> Forgive me. I used to use my old webcam and add a little uh, lever on it. You could just turn it. Seriously considering going back to that. Trouble is its resolution isn't very good. Bought this Logitech camera. Uh, do you know, I'm thinking I probably didn't need to take this off. I could probably have just taken the um the deck out. Oh well. You live and learn, don't you? Does it make it any easier? No, let's take the deck out. That way at least we can get a good disassembly of it. So now we know that we can go in that way. We can always, if necessary. So we've got the deck, I think is held in place by all four of these screws on here there seems to be a like a plate and also these two screws so 
I'm going to take all of them out. I think the plate is just there for extra support. Let's pop that down there for a minute. access not doing anything this is, it's just those two screws with the arrows on is all we needed to actually remove so there's the deck out let's put this plate back in because we don't need to remove this You would use uh, access through that uh, slot to adjust the head azimuth if you needed to align the head. Whenever I do repairs to cassette decks, I never do any adjustments on that unless they're significantly out. Um, so if the um, you know, if you if when you play back a pre-recorded tape, you can hear two tracks. Then obviously the head is alignment is out. Um, and if the uh, the tape speed is significantly out, but otherwise I wouldn't adjust those because any recordings that had been made on that deck would then play back wrong. So um, always leave those sort of things alone. Right, so there is our, let's go back to overhead view, bring the camera down. So there we have a failed drive belt. Now, it looks like the best way of getting into this, I think we'll just crank that mechanism door closed again that might make life a little bit easier never force any mechanisms to open always go with freewheeling gears huh. so I've closed it and now it's not latching into place anyway it's sufficient for our purposes yuck um, so it looks like the best way of getting into this is to take this plate off of here We've got a plate that's holding the motor capstan bearing and so on so we'll have to take all of that out and clean it all because the belt that was on there is nudged bottle cap to hold the screws, keep them separate. Now of course the difficult thing is knowing whether you've got a replacement belt of the right size. We won't know that until we get this all apart and measure it. Okay, so I've taken those off of there. That hopefully should lift off. Oh, look at that gunk on there. Oh, -ho. my bearing's not too bad. Nice bit of gunk on there as well. Get it off your fingers before you spread it about. Now 
Now will that capstan just lift out of there? Yes, it will. Ah, oh, there's a little, a little washer on the end of it. Can you see? So we just gently take that off and make sure we don't lose that. Throw a pair of pliers at it. Why not? Is it a split washer? No, it's not a split washer. No, it's just an ordinary washer. So we'll put that with the other screws for that so we don't lose it. And the capstan should come out. Put the mechanism to one side. A piece of tissue paper on there. Let's see if we can. Yeah, it's just all. It's all gunked. So if it will just wipe off with the tissue to start with. Before we put any cleaning agents on it. Ooh. I was watching a video the other day on YouTube. Fran in her lab. Good old Fran. Loved her videos. And um, she was looking at a 1952 or 54 tape deck. And uh, funnily enough, that had a belt that had gone similar sort of thing. Right. High spiropyl alcohol. Okay, so now we've done that, the really mucky bit is this uh, spindle on the motor. Um, still got an element of the belt wrapped around it and a lot of the gunk on the bottom so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet this bit of tissue with a fair amount of that isopropyl and just wipe it and see if it will come off without spreading too far which it has done thankfully and the problem is with tissue paper it does tend to to leave a bit of tissue behind but kitchen roll wonderful stuff let's see
nice clean spindle. Now it's time to determine if we have a suitable drive bell. Oh yes, hang on, almost forgot. Big lump of goo down there on the deck. So let's see if we can mop that up with a piece of kitchen roll to start with. Right, so now we have to determine the drive belt size. How do we do that? Well, obviously, the drive belt has got to go around the capstan. And the capstan is five centimeters with a radius of two and a half. So if we go two and a half from where the spindle is there, so that puts it approximately where that little marker is there. And if we go from that marker there to there, that's nine centimeters. Would a nine centimeter dry belt do the job? Now I've not got that many flat dry belts. This is an old sharp driver. I haven't got anything you know, specifically for this model, so it's still a good dry belt despite it having been Yeah, I think that's gonna be it's gonna be too long. Yeah, much too long. So I think we were right in nine centimeters. Let's just for purposes sake measure that one. So I think that's 18 to 20. Let's call it 20. That's just right on there. 20 cm. For future reference. A lot of these drive belts I've got are very old, but they've been kept out of the sunlight. And that one there is some cassette belt 64 millimeters. That might be 6.4. I've only got one flat belt in there, and that looks like a very long one. Yeah, that's too long, that one. So, any of these already opened? Yes, that one is. That is nine centimeters. Oh, do you know what? Mm, no, I don't think. I think that's going to be too short. Yeah, so we'll 
very tight. Having said that, the only way we're going to know whether it's going to it will work, let's try it, but if it's too tight you see, that might be, uh, we might just get away with that. It's worth a go. Worst case scenario is it really, really slow because there's too much on it. At least we know what size that one is. So we can easily get. That's a 64 mil, I think. Probably 70 mil would probably do. Despite it being 90 mil, I don't think it'll be a 90 mil. My my measurements are very rough, just to give me an idea. Should we go back on top of the capstan? That's really just to prevent muck getting down into the bearing, which I checked the bearing was quite well lubricated, so I didn't need to put any more on. But Right, having fitted the drive belt and made sure it's turning, uh, we then need to check the other um, drive belt that's on here. And I can see that that one is also on the verge of going. It's very, very weak. So we need to take this back out, back apart again. It's no problem, it's just three screws. One. Still little elements of the gunk been moved about probably by my fingers. Three. No. Take the dry belt off. Make sure we don't lose that one. Pop that to one side. Um, we did put the little washer back on just to hold it in place, but we'll take that off again. More bits of gunk still getting to me. other mechanism is held in place by uh, what looks like to be quite a complicated gearing mechanism. Let's see if there is a position for it. Okay so there's a, a cam here so if we make remember that we put that gear just in case everything all comes flying out there can 
I use my new Wizzo screwdriver on this. I can, but there's not a lot of torque in the screwdriver. Let's get another little pot to put these other screws in, keep them separate. Is that one screw that right, we'll forget that one? And we use Mr. Grey. Probably at this point that something's going to go ping and fly off. And taking the belt off the, the end of the spindle of the motor is no problem, but it's taking that. screw there but I'm just a bit cautious about that. Oh it is that one. I was just a bit cautious with that one. something down there which is something's moved out of position now because it's Something's come out of alignment. Oh, there's more gunk coming from somewhere. Where's that? Oh no. We've got a blob of it somewhere that I've touched. Maybe that there's a hidden screw under here. That wouldn't surprise me. Or maybe a clip. like we're gonna to have to yes a 
a little spring clip here. Just on here, which is holding that bit to there. So let's see if we can just release that. Pretty sure I know where that lever came from. But I'm not 100% certain. I think it was on there, but that way around. No, maybe not. We will find it. That definitely we remember went in there, didn't it? Luckily there's nothing gearing. That's the mode switch there, which is telling the processor what position it is. And there's a little arrow, a little alignment arrow and a notch. So we know we can set that when we put things back. So it's going to be this little beast which popped out is going to be the awkward one. Back over onto the main mechanism. We need to remove that belt, so let's just gently ease off that gear, pop it that way around, and then take that belt off of there. Thankfully it's all in one piece and not gone to gunk. So we should, and it's not gone to gunky on the thing, should be able to identify that and replace it with something similar. Again, small little drive belts I have many of. So although this drive belt is quite thin, it's in good condition and it's the right diameter. So I'm going to chance it. So let's put that back in there. We're not exactly perfectly focused, so apologies for that. That's better. So that little spigot there on this big gear wheel is what goes into the um, mode switch there that tells it what position the deck's in. So it's just this little arm here ah does it sit yeah There's like a little bar there yeah it goes up and down there look does it go up and down there or does it go up and down the other way around Yeah, that's the way. 
That's it. Oh, we could be lucky. So that gear, that's in there, that's in there. switch there presumably is pressed in by that gear turning around there have a clue here because there's a little hole here and usually with these mechanisms these holes align with something in the chassis for when the me mechanism is put together by a machine so turning it round can we find a similar hole for alignment purposes No is the answer to that, but if we put it there, that there, then that switch is not going to be hitting anything at that position, neither is that one, so when we drop this back into here, sure that that gear is in position there. That's sitting in the right place. So let's put one of these screws back in here to hold it in place. Right, so having got that uh, part of the mechanism back together, uh, what we've now got to do is to get this um, drive belt that we put on uh, onto here, and then we need to get that from there over onto the spindle of the capstan. So we drop that onto that 
pulley. And we should be able to just hook it over to the top of the axle of the motor in there, which see I've done but there's this uh, pin there which is just slightly um, blocking the spindle so if I loosen this chassis off a little bit and then get a screwdriver in there to just hook it past there onto the spindle onto the pulley maybe from that side might be easier this side, Let's put it back on the pulley this side, fairly little bit. it round and um, put a bit of cleaning cloth on it as well because I think we've got a bit of grease on there. Nearly in place. There it is. Spin it round. Yep. We're in. It's turning. And we can screw that screw up. that one up as well just quick double check the gear the uh, pin of the main cog is in the mode switch so that's correct so now we have to just because in the process of putting it back together it's pushed it push the door shut let's just wind that out a little bit put that idler back in there uh -huh. Try it with a pair of pot tweezers Let's try to drop it in over the idler Gear in right and find the little spring washer which has migrated its way down the workbench. Hold that in place with one finger so it doesn't ping off and pop it down. That's still on my finger. Place. Of course, you couldn't see me doing that because the cassette door was in the way. Door. Anyway, we put that back in there. So I think we can. Okay, so uh, we now need to refit the uh, capstan and drive belt on that. So let's pop the capstan back in. Just applying a little bit of molly coat onto this bearing. Got a little plastic washer on there, which should be my little sharp end lift up. There we go. Apply just a little bit of molly 
echo onto that. And pop that onto there. Gives us a good bearing on that. And then another little bit onto the actual. And on there. Pop the drive belt over it. Pop it on to the pulley and hold it taut whilst we get it in place. It'll just make life a little bit easier. Oh, come on, it slipped off. Now, I think we'll just power up the old bench power supply. Just make sure things work as they are supposed to. Certainly loaded the mechanism into play. I unloaded it. And it is it did. All looks right. Yep. Oh, I think we're on to a winner here. Yep. Fingers crossed. Right, having replaced the two drive belts, cleaned things up and tested as best we can at the moment. I think whilst we've got it out, um, I should just take a clean cleaning swab and just We have a look at the uh, pinch rod on here. It's got uh, quite a bit of wear, so if we just use a dry cleaning swab on here, just gets rid of the, some of the surface rubber. Uh, whilst the drive belts have failed. This is also a rubber part and it could well be that this has gone really rock hard and becomes not usable and we may have to replace the, the pinch roller. But that looks to be like a fairly standard pinch roller and I've got a fair few replacements so it's taken off that quite a bit of surface of that just take off that as well and we'll just get another throw away cleaner and we'll just clean off the head 
heads, I should say, three heads. That should give us a little bit of a, of a better reproduction, hopefully. Put the camera back up there. Just try autofocus. Yeah, it seems to autofocus okay. Let's bring the mechanism chassis back. So, fingers crossed. It's opening and closing. I'll take my tape. After a bit of rejiggling, what I've done is I've uh, taken the mechanism back out again uh, of the uh, deck and put the front panel like that, leaving it all wired in, just a couple of insulators to stop it shorting out on anything, uh, so that I can now actually see what's happening with the mechanism um, whilst I'm working on it. So let's bring this camera forward so you'll see that when this in actually engages, if I put a, if I um, Put a tape in by simulating a tape by closing the door and putting a, a switch. What's telling it there's a cassette in, and you can see that the pinch roller has actually got a dent in it. See if I give it a little nudge. So that's why the tape wasn't going around. If I give it a little push, you can see it's starting to go. Now I could probably leave it in that state and just let it roll and it might roll itself out. But I suspect the best thing to do is actually replace that pinch roll because it's got a dent in it. So it's when it's playing back the tape, it's just going to do it, do it, do it, do it as the, as the tape goes around. So I think that's our that's our next little fix that we need to do. Press stop. Uh, so we did get it all the alignment right. I was a little bit concerned, but uh, having seen that, I've now confirmed that his pinch roller uh, is the cause of the problem. Let's turn it off. Let's unplug it. Now the pinch roller, I think, should be fairly simple in that it seems to be held in purely by this little clip here. And if we lift it out, there we go. So we can take the pinch roller out uh, and we can actually see, there it is, there's a dent in there. 
you can just see it glinting in the light. So, next thing to do is see if we've got a replacement pinch roller. So, having gone through all my stock of pinch rollers, I found I haven't got the right one, so it looks like I'm going to have to order it, um, see what I can find, and maybe even get a full set of proper size drive belts for it as well uh, if I go by this deck mechanism. So I shall be back after I have uh, obtained the spare parts. Well as uh, luck would have it the customer asked me to uh, get all the spare parts uh, so I ordered a, a new pinch roller and some new belts went through the whole process once again fitted those and uh, returned it to the customer just in time for Christmas. I uh, didn't have chance to uh, do the video editing but uh, suffice to say that uh, it all went back together nice and neatly and worked perfectly and the customer is very very happy. So as always thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.